tennis was good to Petr Korda. It helped him escape the tough communist regime of the former Czechoslovakia in which he grew up and allowed him to travel the world. Yet tennis was also cruel to Petr Korda and very nearly destroyed him. A few months after his greatest triumph, he became the first ATP player to test positive for the anabolic steroid Nandrolone. He was banned from the game for one year, a punishment that precipitated his retirement. I can look at myself in the mirror, knowing that I've never taken anything. I don't tolerate pills. I don't. This issue is one which blighted my career. But you know, I don't have any reason to change anything in my past, because I didn't do anything wrong. And I can die in peace knowing that. As Korda wiles away his time on the golf course, the recent events in men's tennis have brought back memories of the traumatic experience that he went through nearly six years ago. But Korda is reluctant to be drawn on the issues surrounding Greg Gruzetsky failing a dope test for Nandrolone and the scandal of the seven players who tested positive for the drug but avoided suspension after the ATP admitted that its own trainers were responsible. Well, of course, I know from my own experiences how someone in that situation feels, and I can only wish them luck. Now 36, Corder lives in Bradenton, Florida, with his wife and three young children. When he was playing professionally, he was renowned for his grace and elegance, and for possessing one of the best backhands the game had ever seen. Five years after turning pro, and already in the top ten, he reached the final of the French Open, where he lost to Jim Courier. But by 1995, Corder's career was almost ended by a groin injury sustained by his habit of kicking tennis balls around during practice sessions. He underwent surgery and returned to the court and began playing the best tennis of his career. His scissor kick victory celebration became his trademark. I was a showman when I stepped out onto the court. Not a comedian as such, but more like an actor, standing on the stage, dressed in a costume. But once the match had finished, and I left the arena, I was a completely different person. But later that year, Corder's world was turned upside down when it was revealed that he had failed a drugs test at Wimbledon. To this day, he has maintained his innocence of the accusation that he was a drugs cheat and has no idea how he could have produced a positive test. It was like being hit on the head with a hammer. A direct hit. I was told at a tournament in Cincinnati, and I just didn't want to believe what I was hearing at all. Corder was initially cleared of any wrongdoing, but the decision was overturned by the ITF and he was banned for 12 months, the maximum punishment available at the time. The case also hurt him financially, in lawyers' fees, and the fact that he was ordered to return over half a million dollars in prize money that he had won while his case was pending. My dad said a great thing to me once. He said that if a man makes a mistake, then he must pay for it. But the thing is, I never made a mistake, and I had to pay a very, very heavy price. It wasn't that my career came to an end, but rather that I lost my love for tennis. The flame went out. The passion for the sport which was taught me by my dad had gone. The ban plunged him into a deep depression and hastened his retirement from the sport. He officially hung up his racket in December 2000, vowing never to play again after his final match in his hometown of Prague on his father's 60th birthday. But one year later, John McEnroe persuaded Corder to reconsider and play on the seniors tour. In one of his early matches in England, he comfortably beat the American. 
It was my head, not my heart, telling me to play on the seniors' tour. I tried my best, and being back amongst the guys was quite enjoyable. But Corder, more than anyone else, is fully aware that the old spark is no longer there, even though he's reached eight finals on the seniors' tour, winning three of them. Of all the players that I've watched over the course of the last uh, 25 years, that Peter strikes the ball so well, and uh, uh, I'm not too happy with the result, but I love the, the way Peter plays, and I'm, I'm happy that uh, I was a small partner in getting it back out on the tennis court. Peter Corder has finally found peace and happiness, thanks in no small part to his wife Regina and his kids on whom he dotes. But the scars of his past and the apparent mystery surrounding his positive test mean that he will never be able to love tennis the way he used to. My priorities have changed. My values have changed. He normally doesn't miss that much with the the kids have taught me to think about things in a different way, to behave differently, and to react to certain situations differently. I'm thankful for what I've got, and I find something new to enjoy in my life every day.